Look, goals are what makes games fun, but Manchester City's 0-0 draw against Inter in the first half in particular was still interesting and there's loads to talk about in regards to that. My name is Amanda, I'm a professional football analyst. I'm a Manchester City fan too. I'm watching that game in that first Champions League game of that new format for Manchester City at home. It was interesting to see how Inzaghi's Inter Milan actually did stifle Manchester City. Manchester City are a team that I would say are the favourites against any team in world football at home. And despite that, Inter Milan had loads of quality in terms of how they did that up. If we think back to the previous matchup between them, and that was the Champions League final, I actually think Manchester City probably played better in this game um, yesterday than they did in that final, and they won in that final. So football is obviously a results-based game. People look at the results and then they make judgments based off of that. But if we look at the actual process of the game... I think Manchester City did come up with a fair few chances, particularly towards the end. If we begin at the first half, I think it's important to note that, you know, Inter set up in this really strong 5-3-2 and it's a system that has given Manchester City trouble in the past when it's implemented properly. It was really impressive, I think, that Inzaghi did go for the two strikers up top and there were times um, throughout that first half that Inter did catch City on the break, particularly with sort of two, three, four players running at that last line. The way Manchester City set up was... In possession, they had three at the back and then Rodri in front of them, committing the rest of the players, six players, um, into attack. So attacking midfield zones, wing zones, and then also um, number nine striker zones. But they essentially had four players behind the ball or around the ball um, in that four, you know, first part of their of their attacking play. Um, and those three players were Akanji, Diaz, um, Guardiola and Rodri. And, you know, Akanji and Guardiola both pushed up to join Rodri in that sort of second line. So it was only actually Ruben Diaz as a single player in that first line. It was almost like a 1-3-6. Um, and, you know, the rationale behind that, I think it makes sense. You want to commit as many players to the attack to try and pull apart some of Inter Milan's, um, you know, really strong um, defensive structure. And throughout that first half, players that did find um, themselves in some space would have been Rico Lewis. Um, you know, Inter Milan doubled up on the wingers, particularly Savino when the ball did go out there. And in doing so, the ball could have been recycled back to Rico Lewis. At that point, maybe one of the wide centre-backs or one of the midfielders would jump out to Rico Lewis and there was potential for some of City, City's players to run in behind um, the players that had moved out of position. De Bruyne tried it on a couple of occasions, but De Bruyne looked a little bit off the pace yesterday. Um, and then he obviously went off injured. I think he's going to be a massive miss for that Arsenal game in particular. But like we saw yesterday, um, a little bit slow to some of the loose balls. His execution not perfect. And, you know, we hold him to like these massive standards because he is one of the greatest players of all time. But I thought De Bruyne was a little bit off it. The spaces were um, afforded to players who, you know, don't have the same quality as De Bruyne. Rico Lewis, a brilliant player in the small spaces. Um was receiving in that half space. Akanji Gvardiol also receiving it in space as well. Um, but the fact that Inter Milan doubled up on the wingers made it really difficult for them. I think there's a stat that said Grealish created the most chances and drew the most fouls. And I think that's fairly standard for Grealish in the Champions League, um, particularly for the, um, the the Champions League campaign that Manchester City did go on to win a um, couple of seasons ago. But I think a lot of Grealish's chance-created stats are a little bit inflated. Um, from the sense that, look, he, he you know, draws the back for a cutback and see it take a long shot and it might register as a, you know, chance created rather than, um, you know, a pass across the, the face of goal for, for a tap-in. So there's different, you know, variations in that chance created stat. Thought he was okay. Uh, people are saying he was really good. Some people are saying that he was really underwhelming. I think, you know, the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle. But Inter Milan made it really tough for Manchester City in general. I think their front two in Turam and Turimi, um I want to commend them for their defensive work, actually. The way that they got back in and marshaled some of those passes and recycling um, like balls into to Rodri when Manchester City did have the ball made it really difficult for City to have that sort of slick and um, probing um, sort of style of play that we're used to them having. And then also when they did break, um, you know, good in transition, some of their final actions were, were a little bit wasteful. But to control the ball and to, to set their attack off in a sort of very vertical fashion was really impressive from Inter Milan. So first off kind of went in that way. Manchester City loads of the ball, Inter Milan stifling us and making it fairly difficult. Haaland often crowded out and people talk about Haaland all the time. <laughs> it's so funny because you'll get Erling Haaland playing against like the most stubborn 5-3-2 blocks um, from like Champions League caliber sides. You've got Inter Milan 
Um, you know, on the weekend we've got we've got Arsenal, who I'm sure will play in a very similar manner. Maybe you know four, um, five one, or maybe four four two, maybe five three two even. But you know they've got the likes of Gabriel, um, Declan Rice, um, Saliba, maybe Thomas Partey, and and you'll put like four or five really strong central players around Erling Haaland, and then <coughs> fans from the outside, particularly rival fans, will complain that um, I'm not complain. They'll probably glow. They're happy by the fact that Erling Haaland's not scoring, but. In these big big games, the the opposition's entire plan is to block the space into Erling Haaland. Erling Haaland still had a few chances, you know, getting up to head the ball nicely. Um, and I thought actually his, you know, overall play was impressive. The guys on TNT Sport, uh, Carragher, Henri, Mika Richards, etc. We're talking about, you know, his overall game and perhaps that's something that's lacking. But I actually think that yesterday was um, an example of his overall play and how it's really developed over the last you know couple of years since he's been at Manchester City I've noticed that all this season actually um and I think the way that he receives the ball his touch is you know a lot tighter than it used to be the fact that he can manipulate the ball take it you know inside the pitch or, or take it a little bit you know backwards or outside but he keeps the ball close to him and away from the defender on his back he doesn't necessarily lose it um and he's not as loose in possession he can carry it he can turn it a little bit and it's really impressive um, and fairly unique to see a player of his size, his frame, introduce that into his game. Look, is he like Gabriel Jesus in that regard? No. But is he improving? Yes. And he's serviceable in that regard to create space in behind that last line by dropping deep. And I think that's really impressive and really scary for you know other teams and other opposition, knowing that Erling Haaland's introducing that facet into his game. And it's just another string to Manchester City and Guardiola's bow. Um, in trying to become this complete uniform attacking team. Even if Erling Haaland didn't have that, the quality that he does offer in the box or, you know, past that last line is absolutely worth including him in your team game in, game out. But that additional quality in now being able to drop deep and, and link up and pass with a few players is really impressive. And I thought that was on show even uh, if other people didn't think that that was the case. Phil Foden and Gundogan came on in the second half and I thought uh, they introduced a lot of quality into Manchester City side with, you know, Erling Haaland marshalled as heavily as he was. The space, and this was the case for Manchester City in the final against Inter Milan, the space was often in front of the the defence. You know, a lot of times teams are trying to get in behind opposition, really stubborn opposition defences. But when the back line is extremely deep, it's difficult for you to find any space in attacking the space in behind. So by pushing the team even further back and then playing the ball in front of them, you get space sort of around the edge of the area. The space otherwise is again um, in the pockets, in the tiny space between the midfield and the defensive line. And, you know, Phil Foden is a player who has massive quality in those small spaces. We've seen his ability to receive in those small spaces, turn quickly and take a shot, um, which forces the issue or, you know, results in a goal uh, in and of itself. We've seen that quality against Atletico Madrid. In the past, Atletico Madrid playing a 5-5-0 um, and, and Phil Foden get enjoy against them by playing in those pockets. So the rationale between both of these um, introductions would have been to exploit some of that quality in the space. Um, El okay, Gundogan at the end, I think it's we, we need to mention the fact that he did have those two huge chances. There was good movements. And Gundogan, um, by using some of the movements um, of other players, you know, the um, Inter Milan backline being attracted to someone like Erling Haaland due to his gravity, due to just how scary a player he is, uh, meant that there were spaces left um, in those gaps. And Gundogan's a brilliant player in crashing the box, arriving late and scoring those goals. And he did have the movement, he did have the positioning. Um, he arrived at the right time, but he didn't put away his chances. And, you know, on another day, Manchester City win 1 or 2 0 against a really impressive Inter Milan side. But look, it wasn't it wasn't meant to be. I think Guardiola said post match that it was a performance that was better than the one that won them the Champions League against Inter Milan. And it's something that I would agree with on the balance of chances. City did give up a few counter-attacking situations in the first half. Then they did, you know, um, add more players into the middle to prevent some of that um, some of that counter-attacking quality from Inter Milan being developed and progressing. On top of that, Manchester City had more chances, more clear chances than they did against Inter Milan. Um, and those chances probably should have been put away. When you're judging games, it's important for us to look at it and say, did the manager maximise the quality and increase the chances of his team winning whilst minimising the chances of his team losing it. Manchester City had more of the bigger chances, I would say, on the balance of the game. Um, and they did eventually um, start reducing the chances that Inter Milan did have. And when you compare that to the Champions League final, 
it was, um, in terms of the process, a better performance. Inter Milan had loads of their own quality. In particular, I thought it was very difficult for Manchester City to press them high up. The rotations of Inzaghi, I've said before, Inzaghi is probably the most innovative coach um, on like a team-wide scale. And that's because of his rotations in the build-up. You get the central midfielders moving into centre-back, the centre-backs moving into wide positions, the wide players moving into the middle. It seems very fluid, but there's a positional rigidity to it and it makes it really difficult for teams to um, press or mark against it. And they got out of Manchester City's pressure like very few teams I've seen do. Um, and in doing so, they were you know able to attack with their quick players um, and have a few chances of their own. So in, in the games where Inter Milan are not the, um, the, the favourites, I think they'll excel. In other games, I'll be really interested to see how they do play. But Inzaghi on the face of things in big games, in knockout matches, is a manager I'm incredibly impressed with. And this team, in their quality, in their midfield setup, in how their centre-backs look, are really impressive in general. In the league format, like a nil-nil against Nimbland is something that I'll take. I don't think it's a horrendous result. Hope you're enjoying the videos. I'll catch you again in the next one.